Hi, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I'd like to show you how to alternate text and images in PowerPoint for a slideshow. So we'll go ahead and launch PowerPoint from our opening screen. And for this particular example, I want to use a black background. So I'll go up to Design and go up to Across to Background, the tiny arrow next to Background to get the full choices. Uh, I want a solid fill this time, and the fill color I want it to be black and normally I would say apply to all clothes and I do not want these preformatted text boxes so I will go to the home tab select layout and select blank to get rid of those and normally I would go in and set slide transition here so I would go to transitions uh, tend to like um, dissolve so we'll select dissolve and then always apply to all slides in this particular slide show. Now having set those three things um, let me go ahead and and um, just put in I'm not putting in the uh, title s part here the title graphic I am just going to start with the subtitle and then put in the bulleted points as well as the images that accompany them. So we're going to have a text box. This is insert text box and this is the subtitle and this one will be exterior I'm sorry great rooms so we're focusing on log style homes in this particular show and for the exteriors subtitle text is going to be papyrus 40 point white and bold let me make those changes Let me put in Papyrus, size 40, bold, try that again, P, P, okay, and the color for this subtitle text should be white, so let's change our font color to white and we will center it and perhaps move this up just a bit and I tend to like to animate as I go on these slides that we stack images on so I'm going to go up to uh, animations and add let's see for this one we are using boomerang for the subtitle text so I'll go find boomerang which is uh, go down to more entrance effects and that's probably more under the moderate to exciting yeah there's under exciting okay boomerang there it is now the um, I need the animation pane to come up so I can control when it comes in I need to have it come in after previous so let's set that to after previous on the animation pane. Next I would like to um, bring in the first bullet point so I'll insert a text box. Normally I do bullets in one big text box but when I do it like this I prefer to just have single text boxes for each bulleted item. I'll next add the bullet. I'll format this for the appropriate font and size. For my bullet text I'm using Times New Roman 32 point So let me type Times New Roman in there and 32 point and that is bold I believe yes and the color is going to be like a dark tan like maybe that shade right there and we're going to type in compact to spacious now I want that to just be on one line so I'm going to pull it out like that and maybe just pull it back over to the edge a bit okay I'll set my tra my animation for this so I will go in to um, animations again I like to use blinds horizontal let me just activate all these so I can see all my choices blinds horizontal is back up at the top I'll say blinds first and the default is horizontal 
I need the start to be though on mouse click. If it's a bulleted point, that's more my talking points and it needs to be on the mouse click so that I control when it comes in. So we have compact to spacious and then I want the image to follow this. So I'm going to insert picture and I'm going to drive back to where I have these images stored on student common folder into my Davis folder and my CIS 240 folder. This is practice test 2 and great room 1 is the first image I want in there. I'm going to insert it. It's maybe probably not the right size. Now with stacking I tend to layer these so that the next image completely covers this one so I won't start off too big but I can get bigger than this. Okay, compact to spacious. I also like to frame out my images so what I'll do is go up and with my image activated I'll go up to picture border and I'll pick that nice gold color again and make it thicker as well. So I'll go down to weight after I pick the color. Four and a half point is great for PowerPoint. And next I'd like to animate this. So I want to go into back to animations and for images I love to use wipe from top so we'll go into more entrance effects. We'll select wipe from top not bottom. So to change the direction you can now go up to effect options and just say from top. So change that. Now the start needs to be is important here. It needs to be after previous because you want it to automatically follow the bullet point that you just added because they do pair up. Now if I was to play this real quick or just let's launch the projector button down here you can see how this happens. Alright that comes in automatically. I click to make compact to spacious pop up when I'm ready and then the image automatically follows because I set it to after previous. Let me hit escape so we can get back to this and we're going to repeat this again and just to keep from having to duplicate everything so many times I'll just um, copy that text box and paste it down here and then just change the words that way all your formatting is already set my next bullet says exposed beams as you find with a lot of log style homes and we'll use our arrow keys to get those bullets lined up and the animation is already set with that because you copied that as well as the as the words in the formatting. So that's set. Now let's put in our next picture that goes with this one. And that would be Great Room 2. Insert. We'll pull that down over the top of the other one and just resize. Always remember to resize your images from the corner. And this one's of course in landscape where the other one was portrait, so this gets a little tricky. Sometimes I have to reduce the size with the one behind it. And we'll just cover it like that. And just a little bit more from the corner. Also, again, picture border. Select your border color, select the weight. Whoops, let me go back to weight, same place. Four and a half point. And again, we have to animate this one. So we'll go to animations, wipe from top. We try to stay as consistent as possible with all of our parts and pieces here. Wipe, so all images are wiped from top. Uh, after previous, let me do from top. Effect options from top. Okay, so let's see how this plays to check ourselves out here. Pause, it waits for you. Click, compact to spacious. Expose beams. Good, that's what we want so far. And we just keep repeating the same pattern. So if you want to do this again, we can just, actually I've got that on copy, so I can just hit paste again, pull it down into place, change the words. For the third bullet, it needs to say custom stonework. And bring in the image that goes with that, since all the formatting and animation has copied over as well. So we'll insert this last picture, which is called Great Room 3. Insert drag it over the other one it fits nicely without having to resize picture border of course and picture border again to pick the weight which we we'll use four and a half point that's a quick way to put a frame around an image makes it look much better and we need to animate this last one so we'll go to animations more entrance effects we'll pick wipe okay but it needs to be from top so you go to effect options and again say from top and let's play the show make sure we didn't leave anything out 
click, that appears. Click again, that appears. Click again. Ah, something didn't appear. Let's see what we forgot to do. Ah, I had to click to make that last one come up. So that's a good point. Make sure you change your start to after previous for the last picture. Okay. Let me go back and play it again. Click. Click. And one more click. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. Okay. So that is the basics of how to stack images. And basically you're just layering images over each other and you're timing them so they come in right after their appropriate bulleted item. Thank you.